thought uh, we might have a little look at how I go about modeling something from a 2D uh, drawing. So sometimes um, when I am working on a film or, or a TV show, um, oftentimes there are situations where I might need to model something uh, from a 2D drawing and we might not have the 3D model for some reason or we may or, or this may have been from if it's if we're working on a sequel this may have been from the previous show and we want to replicate it uh, and we don't have the 3D asset so we need to copy from uh, an original uh, drawing so I'm going to show you how to do that uh, it's very quick we're just going to look at this little column uh, colonnade detail uh, here and as we go through I'll just explain some of the some of the methods I use it's very quick and and, uh, and simple so I'm just going to move that off to the side and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go file import uh, find your drawing and it's very important we're going to use it as an image uh, you can use it as a texture uh, if you're texturing your model but for now we're going to use it as an image and we're just going to bring that in Give it a second. And I'm just going to drag it out, scale it to any scale. For now, you don't really need to worry too much about the scale of it at this stage. Okay. So I'm just going to look for some measurements that we can go off of. Uh, so the radius is seven foot. Um, I believe this was originally done at a quarter inch to the foot. Or maybe, no, inch to the foot, sorry, for this drawing. Um, so let's just, we can use the seven foot uh, radius to the center there <clears throat> as, as a guide. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna press L for line. Find that center spot, just go into the top view. And the thing that you must understand about this is it's not always gonna be hugely accurate so you do have to take that into consideration when you're scaling things up because obviously the thickness of this line at inch to the foot would be you know a few mil uh, but then when you blow this up to full scale the thickness of that line is going to be an inch or two so it has a knock-on effect so you have to bear that in mind but we're just using this as a, as a guide for now so I'm just going to go roughly to the center of uh, that radius. I'm going to click the line. I'm going to exit that, and I'm going to press T for tape. And I'm going to we're going to scale this now. So I'm going to click once at the beginning, once at the end, and I'm going to type seven foot because that's the radius. And I'm going to enter. And it will say, "Do you want to resize the model?" Yes. And now, if we check that radius, it should be seven foot. There we go. So that gives us a, a rough idea of the scale. And then obviously this one here um, is now massively uh, huge. So what we can do, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll scale it back down uh, when, we're, when we're done with it. So at the moment, all I want to do is get this profile. So, and we've got two profiles here. We've got the, the cap and the base molding. And you'll notice that the cap is narrower at the, at the top of the column than it is at the bottom and that's because of these things here which are called entices which is the old fashioned way of working out um, the optical illusion uh, on a column uh, it's in classical architecture I'm not going to go into that too much in too much detail but it's just so you know why it's narrower at the top than it is at the bottom okay so for now I'm going to find my center line if I find that beginning of that line and I go on the green axis it snaps to the green and you can see that we're out there so what I'm going to do is type Q oh, no, I'm going to highlight that image first type Q find that spot and I'm just going to go to here I'm going to bring that in so I know that everything is perpendicular and we're going to find that there there we go and we can oversell slightly it's fine and all I'm going to do, just for the sake of it, is start using the curve tool 
to trace. So it's the line tool and the curve tool to trace this profile. I can actually see there where my original working out was for the for that. So yeah, I love it. I think that I think that's a bit of a straight line there. Type 90s just to get a nice curve on there. And because I can't quite find that center with the circle, I'm just going to use A for arch and we're going to get a best fit. And again, there I'm going to type uh, what am I going to type 2448s to get a nice smooth curve. And again, I'm using the line tool and the arch tool. find these areas and what you've got to remember is a lot of the time I used to worry really quite a lot about um, how um, you know get getting the getting all the curves and everything exactly right because you know I didn't want to um, send the drawing out and for someone to say well this isn't you know the architecture on this but you've got to take into consideration that the discrepancies within the sculpting of it and the molding of it um, you know can be out by an inch or two inches whatever it is, whatever it ends up being uh, well no not quite that much but you, you, you see what I mean it's not it, there's no real when you're when you're dealing with basically the thickness of a line, um, I don't think you have to worry too much really. And I think that was an epiphany for me, epiphany moment when I sort of realised that. So again, we're just gonna tidy this up as we go. A for arch. Find those curves best fit we want and you'll see that SketchUp kind of knows what you're trying to do with tangents and um, we'll work it out for you basically very important to make sure you get rid of any little bits of additional geometry like that little bit of line there take this into another file because I want to shrink this down to this size which is I believe 11 inches so we're just looking at the original drawing here you can see that top to bottom that's 11 inches uh, so we'll work that out Based on that, so I'm going to go command copy, file new, and we're just going to paste that in here. Oops, sorry, command copy, command paste, and let's stick that up on. Axis and actually, just so you know, so when you've got the um, protractor, if you want to lock to an inference, if you click your 
um, click on a, on a spot to do it. Obviously, like the bottom corner there is a good, good spot. If you click and then drag into any of the inferences, you can do that. So then release to lock it in, and then you can like that. There we go. And you can see there's a bit of an extraneous detail there. And we could probably actually take that into there. Get rid of that and that. know that, that needs to be 11 inches <clears throat> so using the tape measure put that to there and we'll say 11 inch resize model yes and that gives us our profiles so now we're going to copy that back and we can go back into here there's our profile and then center line and roughly there to there it, you're just going edge to edge basically on the uh, so that's fine and we'll take that up to Again, I'm not being 100% um, spot on here because it's obviously the thickness of the line and everything else, but we can tidy things up as we go. So um, I'm going to go to that first end C point and I'm going to use the arch tool. So rather than having to work out my end SketchUp works out the tangent for me and that's pretty close. So I'm just going to double click. And that gives me my profile we can do again Q lock it into the inference by dragging and then we're going to drag that up to 90 degrees and get rid of this top and bottom bit and I'm actually going to just drag all of this over or make a copy even over 20 feet, 30 feet, no, 50 feet. Just get it out of the way of all of that stuff. So we can play around with this here. And the reason I'm moving that by a set amount is I might want to move it back uh, to the original spot. So I know that once I've done all of this, if I want to move it 50 feet back, it will be in the same spot. Now we're going to use this profile. So I know that the base is, is uh, square. Let's just line this up, first of all. right space yeah so it was up to that point there let's make sure it Ooh, it's going to stick together now I can also lock into the inference there we go okay I know that the base is square, so we can cut that out. And I'm just going to take a little bit off of there. I'm going to make a copy. And I'm going to go all the way to that edge. No, I'm not, because I need to reverse this. So I'm going to go Command 9. And I'm just going to use the option to scale about the center. I'm going to grab that. And it's edge to edge. Make a copy. Goes to that edge. And I need to take a bit of this as well. You know, it's edge to edge. Okay, we can fill 
is in. So when we're doing a, <clears throat> a follow me operation, you can do it to any radius really, because it will always uh, follow about its center, um, if that makes sense. So what we're gonna do, so I'm just gonna use circle, and use the up arrow to lock it into the up um, inference. And then you can drag that out to any size. So you could you could go there, you could go there. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna oversize it just so it's easier to delete once we unstick everything. So I'm gonna move, move the uh, uh, delete the center of it and just highlight the path. Now I if we bring in the entity info box, <clears throat> you can see that it's 90 segments for something this size. That's pretty good. Um, amount of lines because it's going to be a nice smooth thing if you if I turn that down to 12 then obviously but I always find 90 sides is a good happy medium for me so we'll keep that at 90 and now all I'm going to do is so you highlight the path use follow me give it a click and there we go of that turn the whole thing into a component I'm just going to call it shaft for now and let's have a look at some of this other detailing uh, so it's a circular cap square base and the square base is Original drawing, so we can see uh, two foot and one eighth, which is odd. That's odd. Um, there would have been a reason for that, which I can't quite remember. But here we go. We can go into the center of this. Oops, something going on there. Let's just move that up. find the center of this by using a plugin called arc center point finder because what this has done is it's it's um, exploded the curves for some reason sometimes it does this sometimes it doesn't but it just means everything is segmented now and SketchUp won't find automatically find the center for me because it's not a closed loop so you highlight two sides the extension is Chris former tools arc center point finder and that gives us the center. So we're going to come out of there and do rectangle. Option to do center rectangle. Just drag that out in a square, and it was two foot and one eighth inch by two foot and one eighth inch. And we can push that down to there. slightly bigger than it anticipated so we'll just bring that out one inch and again if you've got more time and you want to refine it then you can and I'm just going to make that a group but what I'm going to do I'm going to copy it and delete it I'm going to go inside the component and I'm going to make the I'm going to group the geometry inside the component and then I'm going to go edit, paste in place. And that just means that because it's inside the component, any changes I make to it will happen to all of the instances. Um, so we can move that now. We know that it was a seven foot center. So again, we can, using that center point, if I press K, oh, did I delete it? Oh, it 
doesn't matter. At any point on here, if I make a copy, drag it seven feet and 30 degree center on the top now <clears throat> critical my tools arc center point finder and I'm going to make a copy of this every 30 degrees so I'm going to go Q for the protractor find the center point lock it in option to copy click anywhere type 30 degrees is it 30 oops It's 30 degrees off the center, so it's 60 degrees. So I'll just undo that. Highlight the one you want to copy. 60 times 5. Get rid of the one in the center. In fact, what I'll do is just put a, a little marker in so I know that that's the center. colonnade and you can do anything you want then from that center point you could draw out a nice um, ceiling piece that's to the center so I'm gonna go six inches six inches get rid of that get rid of that push that up you know and then we can probably use this is just as an example I'd probably Grab this again, make a copy of it. Just gonna stick it in the middle for now. Make a copy of that of, of the path. Make that a group. Then go edit, paste in place. And I'm gonna grab this because I know it's on the center. Change it back to the top. I like the path <clears throat> and then follow and that's giving us a nice molding in there um, yeah. and you can play around you can add add you know a dome or whatever you want to do but for now there you go that's how I would make that relatively quickly from an original uh, drawing. I'm going to stick some uh, shadows on. I'm going to play with that. Some nice dark shadows. quick and easy colonnade. So I hope you enjoyed that little lesson. Um, hit the link, subscribe, and um, yeah, see you again soon.